for professional education. In the last video, we saw how we have done a uh, account setting to buy an asset, and also we have defined the item for an asset with its asset category and item group. Now, this item, uh, asset item, we need to buy, and for buying, we are going to follow a simple process, which will start from, uh, which will start from, uh, let's say, material requisitions and quotation from the supplier. Uh, sorry, a request for quotation from the supplier, then supplier quotations, purchase order, purchase receipt, and the payment. So let's start with that. So this uh, item need to be procured from a supplier so first we have to define a supplier in our case the supplier type is going to be a uh, furniture and supplier name is going to be 05 so let's define this supplier type and supplier name so i'll say supplier type supplier group sorry it's not a type it's group so here i can see it says no furniture so i'm going to define a new it's a simple entry which says furniture and so save so I have now supplier type as a furniture available here same way supplier name I want supplier list so create a new supplier it's a it's supplier 05 the group is furniture supplier 05 in furniture group save so let me refresh yeah, supply 05 is now available. Now with that, I will start my buying process from a material requisition. So I can go to buying and in buying I have a material request. So make a new material request. Let's say required date is um, today. Item code is chair. Quantity, let's say I want two numbers and the required date. Uh, let me put one more item called desk uh, and it's two numbers from for warehouse. Okay, it's a store. That's all. So, not much information required here. Uh, let me click it save and let's submit. Permanently submit, yes. Now, once the um, material equation has been made, the next step is RFQ, request for quotation. So, I can go here and say request for quotation. So, here just a supplier name is to be entered from whom we are asking a supplier quotation. So, I will just select here supplier 05. This is uh, optional. And to that supplier, I am sending this request for quotation and expected that he or he she will send me the quotation let's say when the quotation is received I need to define that quotation into my ERP next so I'll go and click on supplier quotation and click on make and this is from supplier 05 click on make supplier quotation so beauty is that all this thing is you know getting carried forward and in supplier quotation I want to put the rate as 12,000 for chair and 20,000 for desk and the CGSC as GST as 9% for each. So let me define that. So I'm going to put the rate as 12,000 for chair and 20,000 for uh, the desk. And I don't want this extra row. And tax and charges, uh, let me put on net total, the account head is incoming CGST, which I defined earlier in my charts of account. Again, as similarly, incoming SGST on net total. Nine person. The third row is not required. Just it's a consider tax and charges for total. Uh, it's a valuation. It's total. I think so. 
on net total it's okay and that's all so okay uh, so with that my quotation is ready let me save and submit once I submit it the next pro step is to make a purchase order let's say this quotation has been accepted by the uh, company so I'm going to create and say purchase order in the purchase order uh, only the date is required for today just all information is getting carried forward from the earlier including the taxes and the total num amount so click save and submit now against this purchase order the supplier is going to send this chair and desk to two quantity each once they are received I have to declare them in system and uh, that's what we call as the purchase receipt which is here so let's create that it's called receipt and once I receive I'm just going to declare that this has been received and while receiving I think I have to define it as received in location uh, let me check that asset location yeah so it's going to be I'm going to receive them in office the location which was defined in both the cases so for chair also and for desk also asset location as office and I'm going to receive them so once I receive please note that the uh, it gives you a message that asset 01 created asset 02 created okay now these two assets have been created note that now that uh, now once this asset receives inside the premises it is and uh, the total valuation of the company will be high and in, in, in not uh, um, the literal terms but the balance sheet size will go up we can check that from account and the balance sheet now it shows that the 10 lakh rupees were there as a bank and the fixed asset we have received but not build so now let me go and complete the cycle for it's a purchase receipt list that purchase last which was open I will open that and now I'm going to make a payment so let's say first invoice so let's say supplier sign me the invoice and I'm going to declare that invoice here no change required here just click save and submit so invoice has been uh, registered now the final is the payment so I'm going to make a payment through my bank account and um, the check number let's say it's 899901 and today's date so once I make this payment of total 75,520 which includes the taxes as well I expect that my ICIC bank balance will come down and my asset will go up so let's go and check that I'll go to account the balance now I can see that the ICIC bank has to come down the tax asset has increased and the fixed asset has also gone up so with this we have finished the purchase of asset and if I go and check the asset list it will show me these two assets which has been created from there now the last step is to declare these assets and have a depreciation schedule created for them so I will go to I'll open one of the asset here and I'm going to say is existing asset but it doesn't just purchased it was 13 February so uh, I can't declare that is existing asset gross purchase amount is 40,000 with two chairs I don't think anything is required the depression schedule is still not created uh, let me save and submit
just a minute yeah depression start date I should declare so depression should will start from let's say next month onward from same date let's say 13 February and I don't think anything is required finance book frequency everything is there information except this depression start date rest everything is there so let's click save and ensure that calculate depression has been ticked so with that it should so give me the depreciation available for the use date okay available for use date is required so available for use date from today's onward so once I save and sub oh, so once I save it has created a an mm, depreciation schedule with this amount And if I submit, the depreciation will start as schedule. Similarly, I can go to the chair and here only available for use date from today, depreciation start date from let's say March onward, save and submit. So with this, my both assets are now ready with their corresponding um, depreciation schedule so on those dates the depreciation schedule will start this is how the asset has been defined I hope uh, I could able to make you understand the whole process thank you very much